Howdy y'all. Yesterday I posted in the 3D printing server as well as a Facebook 3D printing group a way to add shading to your MMU2 uh, multi-material printing system. Now the MMU uh, by Prusa has a maximum of five different colors that you can choose from, but I, like many others, want to expand this or extend this beyond uh, just those five colors. And you can get away with that by adding shading to objects uh, by giving variable layer height graduations, uh, adding a black or a white. Uh, and really you can do this with any color you want, but you get the most bang for your buck by uh, adding a black or a white here. And so uh, I want to show you how I go about programming this in by creating the swatch that you see there on the right that uh, really showcases the effects that uh, these uh, color graduations are going to give you. So without further ado, let's get into Fusion 360. I'm going to create a sketch that has a rectangle that is 20 millimeters by 6 millimeters. And I'm going to create a rectangular pattern that is 6 millimeters apart and 5 of these rectangles. And I'm going to take this middle one because I know with a 0.2 millimeter layer height that three layers high is going to give me uh, 0.6 millimeters of a total distance that I'll have to uh, create this effect for. So in my testing, 0.6 millimeters was plenty enough. Uh, these three layers were plenty to be able to extenuate this, uh, this effect. Uh, you could theoretically get away with doing this with translucent or opaque filaments, um, even further graduations of layer height, but for a majority of your filaments, you're going to be covered with this uh, three millimeter or this three layer height rule. Um, so to add this next color here, uh, I, I mistakenly created this as a body. I'm going to right click here and create a component from the body. And from that component, I'm going to label this color. And then I'm going to press A to actually give it a color. So I'm going to grab digital glue here and drag it over the component. And then let's create the, uh, let's start to create the black here. So if I press E over this sketch and do 0.2 millimeters because I only want uh, one layer of black on this next graduation, uh, I'm gonna create a new component and then label this black. And likewise, I'm gonna press A again and I'm gonna give it a color. Uh, my anthracite gray is the one that I like to choose because that's the actual color that I will be applying this to or applying this with. And I'll select the next one and do 0.4 millimeters, which is now two layers of black. And this, it's okay that this joins because uh, it's adjacent to another black and that's, the, that's what I'm trying to go for here. And then next, let's create the white. I'm gonna press E on this side, do one layer high, new component again for this one and label this white. Same for here, press E, 0.4, because now it's two, two layers, join because it's adjacent and I will now give this some color by pressing A for the signal gray, drag it over the component. And as you can see here, uh, I have my, my graduations. Let's go ahead and deselect this sketch. And you'll see here the difference in layer heights. Now, to create my two layers of blue, I'm gonna select this object here, uh, or at least this, this face here, and do 0.4 millimeters, because that's two layers. I'm gonna do new body instead of join because the adjacent body that it's trying to join with is not the blue that I'm trying to go for. Um, but instead, I can click this body over here in this, uh, in this body's folder and drag it into the color. And then there's my blue just fine. Same, same thing with this layer. I'm gonna do 0.2 millimeters, new body, 0.4 millimeters, new body, 0.2 millimeters, new body, and then take all of these bodies all at once and drag them into the color. There. And now you can see where I get the variable layer height graduations for each of these color sets. And then what, what creating each of these as a component will do for you is even though there's multiple bodies here, I don't have to create a, a single STL for each one of these bodies. I can just right click on this component and save as a mesh. And that will create a singular STL in this three-dimensional space that encompasses all of these bodies. And so uh, 
without going into that process, I'm gonna flip over to Prusa Slicer and show you how to import this. So I went ahead and I've already created quite a few of, uh, of these sprites and I'm gonna show you how to import them. So I use these four colors here for this Flareon, which is rose tan, white, orange, and black. I'm gonna go ahead and click open when selecting all of them. And it's gonna ask me if, uh, if I'm using a multi-material printer, do they, do they want to consider these uh, multiple parts as a singular object? Or should it consider it as multiple parts? And I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Um, sometimes you'll find that there is a, a problem here. All you have to do is click this, uh, click this caution sign to fix it with a net back service. Uh, for me, now that I have this object here all aligned appropriately, I'm going to go ahead and change the colors to the colors that I have over with me here. So this number one is black, uh, this last one is white, and if I wanted orange in here, let's see, I want orange to be number two, so I will select Prusa Orange for this one, and then Rose Tan is already selected appropriately. And if I click out of this, you'll see that it's pretty flat, um, but I actually have these color graduations integrated into this. So what I'm gonna do, for the good surface quality that I like to achieve, is I will click on this object, I'm gonna press A F for face, and I'm just gonna click on this top surface to flip it on, on this side so that the, the main uh, feature is now on the textured build plate. So I can get that nice smooth surface and, and not have to worry about uh, the weirdness and layer lines. It all squishes together so it, it looks kind of like one cohesive piece. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to slice this and if you look layer by layer, if I go all the way down so that I'm at the first layer and I am looking straight onto this, you'll see that all of my colors are there. But if I go to the second layer, you'll see that some of those colors change over each of these pixels. And that's, that's where the effect I'm trying to go for, that's where it really hits. Um, oh, excuse this print setting. This print setting is actually on the 0.3 millimeters, I want to be on the 0.2. So I'll go to this this profile here, discard this, re-slice the profile, and if I go back down to the first layer, to the second layer, to the third layer, you'll see these changes here. And that's how I really go and uh, and apply this effect. So uh, please let me know if this was helpful for you. Um, I could provide more tutorials in the future if you want to see how it is that I uh, go about digitizing some of these sprites uh, versus uh, how I go about digitizing some other things um, that are not pixel related, maybe some complex geom uh, geometric shapes. Um, but again, yeah, just just leave a comment. Let me know, let me know what you thought of this process. Um, I am the same name twice. Uh, we'll be catching you later.